¿Cuándo supiste? My dad asked me from the driver's seat of our four-door Toyota Camry. We were parked outside of a mall in National City, waiting around while my mom and two sisters shopped. The car had been quiet, interrupted every now and again by the sounds of car doors closing, alarms chirping on and off, footsteps and muffled conversations as folks walked by. His question, an unexpected break in the silence, caught me off guard. He hesitated between the words, trying his best to sound casual, but his face betrayed him. When did you know? He was intentionally vague, perhaps because acknowledging explicitly the topic would have been too uncomfortable, but I knew exactly what he was asking. I had come out to him just a week ago in that same car. We had pulled up to our house after a trip to the movies. He turned up the engine and began unbuckling his, his seatbelt. As he made his way to open the door, I blurted out, Wait! We hadn't talked about it since then. Now, sitting where we were again when I told him, he brought it up on his own, seemingly out of the blue, and I wondered how long he'd been waiting to ask this. So, I tried choosing my words carefully, deliberately. Sure, I asked, I've been asked this plenty of times before by friends and acquaintances, and answered them with ease, but now I struggle to translate a lifetime of experiences to my father. Um, well, maybe I could tell him about my first crush, Alan Rodriguez, in the first grade. I could explain to my dad how, even though my six-year-old brain couldn't process the strange warmth in my chest, I knew, somewhere between the sandbox and the monkey bars, I realized I would give up my Power Rangers lunchbox to be Alan's best friend. <laughs> Recesses of him always felt too short, and I cried in the jungle gym when he told me he was moving to a new school. Perhaps I tell him about my first girlfriend, Jen, the cheerleader with a smile full of braces and killer legs. I could explain how we really only started dating because my friends pressured me into it, how it never felt quite right when Jen and I held hands in the hallway, and how our lip gloss was always too sticky. I could tell my dad about the wave of relief that washed over me when she broke it off after a month because I was too emotionally unavailable. <laughs> Or, if I was feeling particularly candid, I could tell him about the first time watching porn, the summer before eighth grade at a sleepover at Marcus's house. After the movie ended, all the other boys started, uh, started arguing about which one of the women on screen was the hottest, and when the question came to me, I froze. I could tell my dad how I went to sleep that night with a strange knot in my stomach, as the glistening men from the movie kept pausing and rewinding on a loop in my mind. But I couldn't boil it down to a single moment. And I had no way of encapsulating all of these memories into one coherent explanation, so instead I stuck with a simple, I've kind of always known. Like, ever since I was little, you sort of always know before you know. My words hung in the space between us for a moment. See, sí, he began. Tu siempre fuiste. My mind went to finish his sentence before he could, hoping to cushion the blow of what might come next. You were always different. Not a rude observation, but a direct acknowledgement of an inherent contrast between myself and other boys. He might reference that time I went to bed in my sister's GMP night down after refusing to take it off. Or the whole movie of me singing and dancing to a Gloria Trevi song when she performed it on stage. You were always awkward. A statement with a bit more bite to it, but something I could handle. He had plenty of evidence to pull up. The time I refused to go to school class because I didn't want to change in front of the other boys or the way I would shrink into myself at family parties when my feels were really endlessly about not having a girlfriend. You were always odd, strange, introverted, confusing. You were always a disappointment. It would come not as an accusation, but a statement of defeat, a confirmation of a fear that had started eating away at me since I was a little kid. It would be a product of all those times when I knew I wouldn't live up to the son he wanted me to be, they would finally bubble up to the surface, the collective weight of those moments piling on top of us. Always a failure, always a letdown. But when I finally looked up to meet his gaze, I saw kindness where I thought it would counter sadness. Especial. With that simple word, I began to map my way back through all these moments, slowly seeing them through a different lens. I landed on a memory from that same summer, at a party at my Diamona's house. My dad and uncle had been reminiscing, reminiscing about their years playing baseball with their league at work. And as I laughed through stories, I heard my name come up. Carlitos never got into baseball, did he? My tío Alex asked. My ears pricked up. 
and I waited nervously for what came next. No, my dad answered back. He started telling him the story. But I tried, he said. I'd always invite him to my games, and he'd always say, See, puppy! Then he would climb into the car with his backpack full of comic books, my dad continued. And any time I'd look out into the stands from the dugout, he'd be sitting there with his nose in a book. He didn't give a shit about the game. My dad laughed. But he was always there. I see now that my dad and I have been in a constant communication with each other. All this time, we've been developing a language together, a way to talk with each other and understand who we are. This language might be imperfect and incomplete, but it's ours, and it's been there all along. It's with us every morning when he calls me and he's getting into work to say, Buenos dias, Galanta, 9 a.m. Eastern, 6 a.m. Pacific. It's there when we sit down to watch The Notebook for the millionth time on ABC Family because it's his favorite. <laughs> Legit. <laughs> and it was there with us that afternoon, sitting in the busy parking lot, when he asked me when I knew, as he tried to understand how long his son had been too afraid to share this with him, how long I had been sitting with this on my own. And in that moment, I knew that I didn't have to try to explain myself any more than I already had. He's always understood me better than I ever realized. We've been seeking together all along. He smiled. Siempre fuiste un niño especial.